Hello guys to this tutorial about Kotlin version 1.7 In my uh, YouTube channel I have just I have some uh, video about Kotlin but it's quite old Today I update the new Kotlin tutorial version uh, 1.7 So uh, the video can about 2.5 hours I think it is very good for you if you are some beginner or programmer who need to uh, run firstly with Kotlin or any other developer who want to change from Java to Kotlin. The Kotlin is used for what? The firstly, Kotlin is, is used for native Android application for writing an application to run in Android and now it can multi-platform with KMM. With KMM, you can write your application in in uh, Android firstly, and then be to run in iOS. The second part is very important, means that the back end uh, with Spring MVC, Spring Boot, you can write Kotlin and. Uh, you can also develop a back-end application with Ktor and Vertix. About front-end, you can use KeyVision and Doodle, writing in Kotlin. Now, we start with Kotlin tutorial. Now, for some practical example. Uh, so, firstly, you need to uh, Google search the Java Development Kit download from Windows, from Mac OS, from Linux, depending on your operating system. So for uh, Java, you need the latest version. At this time, the latest version is uh, 18. So you uh, can download the source and the uh, executable file. So I recommend you to uh, download the, the execute file from here you right click to msi installer and save to your computer uh, choose your location then uh, uh, click to install for installing it is very easy to work because you can only click ok and next 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 so the process is very simple okay so now click to here and next Next, choose the default uh, location for the Java Development Kit folder. So next, okay, so close. Uh, Java Development Kit has been successfully installed in your computer. The, the second software you need to download is IntelliJ IDEA. The IntelliJ IDEA is uh, the integrated uh, development environment for developing the uh, developing uh, Kotlin uh, to write your Kotlin code. So uh, download the community version. The community version is free, and the ultimate has uh, charts. But I uh, we can use only uh, community version because the community version is uh, enough for. Uh, this course for this tutorial so click and install and uh, okay open folder to see the output and now you click to IntelliJ C C mean community uh, and wait a few seconds next to you can also click to IntelliJ idea you can click to bin photo to the part to set the environment part for uh, window environment part and the associated uh, chain means that you can open this type of file uh, with IntelliJ so next and you can reboot your computer your PC now for updating every necessary components okay so after restarting, you can run this, pin this to taskbar for easier 
to open and uh, do not import anything so IntelliJ IDEA version latest version you create a new project new project and uh, select the project type a new project uh, has various type of uh, language and you can uh, choose uh, the Java development kit version uh, choose a Kotlin, Java, Ruby, HTML, etc. So here I use the Kotlin and build system with Maven. Maven can uh, manage your uh, code, manage your project by uh, add or, remo or removing uh, dependencies to the palm.xml and after uh, reloading your project every dependency has been downloaded from the internet from the github to your project yes it is very easy to to uh, add or remove dependency to your project using maven or rattle rattle is usually used for android project okay so select your group id or your application id or your application package Maybe Kotlin tutorial 2022. Okay, so this is my project, and uh, you can always add to add a new file into your existing project. Okay, so rearrange your uh, ID a little bit, and then click to palm.xml. Uh, this is a mail file contain uh, every dependency resetting for the project. You know, if you want to add more dependency to this uh, project, you can open dependency, add uh, copy some code for installing, paste to here, and uh, save this project and reload. Okay. So you can choose Java compiler here. Uh, in this tutorial, I choose the latest version, so let's use 18, yes, 18 is the latest version, or uh, 11. Uh, so here, you can also use the Kotlin compiler, I use uh, the latest uh, 1.7, 1.7 1. Uh, is the latest, but not the, uh, the, the stable folder. So I recommend use uh, the the uh, latest for uh, for for learning, but uh, use the stable for doing your uh, project. Okay. So the target uh, GVM or the Java Virtual Machine version here is 18. Okay. Let's use the latest version for experimental for the tutorials, but use the stable version for a new project okay so now choose save 1.7 and 80 uh, 18 for uh, uh, compiler uh, java virtual machine version okay so you can install more plugin to this uh, the plugin here may be the, the, the plugin for use interface or the theme you can also use some a beautiful team for coding uh, for my experience I uh, always use uh, the Mac OS team for for example the Xcode uh, team Xcode Dark team is some something like your uh, interface or UI in Mac OS or in Xcode for Mac OS okay yes it depends on you I can uh, choose many uh, team here okay so let's right click to Kotlin and define a new Kotlin file. Uh, so we choose this and choose file. So naming it is main main.kt. Kt mean Kotlin. Yes, Kt mean Kotlin. This is a main file. So uh, this project will run and and uh, execute this file firstly. As the first time when you create uh, 
you run this project this file is run the first time okay so reopen again to apply every setting to your project yes so now open main.pt inside main.pt the first line is uh, to define a function name main yeah so then inside the function we define the first line print line hello one to display uh, a string to the console so run this program by right click and run then you can see in the console the string hello world okay so this is the first line in your program and the main here is a, a main function and this function is run the first time when you run the, uh, when you execute this project okay so this is a variable the variable x uh, is an integer and the value is 5 then we print out this variable to the screen by uh, typing x is uh, dollar x yes so this is string template string template or string templation mean you concatenate a string to one or more variables to uh, from a new string okay so you print out to the console that it is five uh, you can also define a variable with type like this a uh, semicolon in means uh, that the a variable has a type of integer so uh, the name is 120 so we display x and a to the console by x is dollar x and a is dollar a yes very convenient when you want to display multiple uh, variable inside a string by using a string template so you can also assign uh, this variable to another value and then print it again so it's now is dollar is n to run again yes run again you can see the is now is six so variable mean that you can change the value to a new value okay so it's now is dollar is you can execute the operation like multiply uh, adding uh, uh, time or divide okay so uh, van mean uh, constant van mean cannot be changed cannot be reassigned cannot be reassigned so it is called van for example van y and you cannot uh, change the value of y because it is uh, constant or cannot be reassigned so van cannot be reassigned okay so uh, next you you will learn about uh, how to define some uh, of the variable and you define a function a function is a block of code so we have multiple code with the same uh, function and we uh, combine it inside a block and set it a name so it is function so function is a block of code uh, the first function here is say hello and the, the argument of the function is name the name type is string so hello name then you call this function by say hello and the argument is one so it display hello one okay so define a new file and you name is function dot kt function dot kt and we copy this function to this file and inside uh, this main dot kt you can read this function outside okay 
So say hello, run. And the say hello uh, is it functions dot kt, and you can access it outside uh, the key, uh, function dot kt, or uh, I execute it inside the main dot kt file. So say hello, yes. So run this again. Uh, so now we talk about function with return value. Uh, for example, we have some uh, calculation. We multiply two variables. We divide two variables, and we uh, we copy this everything inside a function, and this function return a new value. For example, we sum or uh, we adding two variables. Then to to call this function, you need to uh, add this inside a string template uh, sum 2 and 3 is sum uh, open bracket 2 semicolon 3 yeah. so x and y now is double uh, so you need to add the floating point uh, uh, 0 0.0 2.0 yeah, 3.0 yeah. so it is double and point zero is now called floating point. Yes, sum two and three is five point zero. Yes, very easy to uh, to understand. We can now use label arguments. Label argument means that we have label before the arguments. For example, we can add it here is x equal is equal to, and y is equal to. Yes. The label argument allows you to see the code more understandable by uh, adding the parameter be be before the value and it is more readable for developers. The next we have a function with uh, three four parameter uh, red, green, blue is integers are uh, integer alpha is flat alpha may change from 0, 0.0 to 1.0 so now i print the value uh, red green blue and uh, alpha to the console so run again uh, open main dot kt and show color uh, the value for red for green for blue and the alpha value is 5 uh, 15 uh, 50 100 percent so 0 0.5 okay so run again then the output display color like here okay so this is a function with multiple parameter and return one parameters yes this is very commonly uh, function we use in reality the function with the variadic arguments or var a r g or variadic arguments this function has uh, the the number of yeah, uh, unknown the number of arguments uh, so the, the argument like a uh, an array so we can iterate we can iterate the array and uh, display the value and use the value for example the function name like uh, and the parameter is uh, the um, fruit light like apple like orange pineapple kiwi etc we add uh, many uh, fruit name to to the arguments and the output here is i like Apple, I like orange, I like pineapple. Uh, another very interesting function is infix functions. Infix function can be called without using the, the period or bracket. For example, the function to uh, to adding a number to another number name plus plus is a function name, then the, the infix function name we choose. So this can uh, plus two 
variable. For example, we define z. Uh, z variable is equal to 12 plus 5. And plus here is infix function. Yes, infix function. And then we print uh, the z value to the console. So the z now here is uh, 17. Okay. You can also print the, uh, for example, 5 plus 3 is dollar um, 5 plus 3. Yes, so it is very convenient to call. And this is more nature than the original function. Yes, 5.3. Run again. And the output now here is 8. 5.3 is 8. So let's try another uh, example for, for example, times. Times mean we we times this value to uh, x. This is one line function because the execute uh, execution part is only one line. So we can use this as a one line function. Yes, it's more simple. Uh, every function with only one line can can become a one line function then I can use it like any other function so 6 times 5 is equal to dollar 6 times 5 yes and so run this main key t again click and run then uh, 30 okay so we define another infi function name now um, the, the 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 parameters or the argument here is string so love name so this love dollar name yes so the function here is from uh, execute from two string so now uh, try to 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 run the example by green line zones love mary yes zone and mary are two string then uh, I, I can call this function yes zone love uh, mary yes we add two string because the love is a function of string then you can call this by using string now I define a message, a message variable. Uh, type of this is string, and assign this to the message, and then print this message again, and run again. Okay. So now this message is John love Mary. Oh, okay. Yes. No problem because this is quite uh, easy to understand easy to to uh, to read code if uh, use the infix function the infix function so now I assign the message to none and zero occur because uh, it cannot be used none null type string so the default string in Kotlin is always none null none null means that it must have a value an initial value otherwise you must use optional variable like this we define the email this email can be null or optional value yes question mark is optional this is nullable or optional value and you can assign this to null and you can print email is good to dollar email run again yes so now the, the the variable display is email is good to none and the two uh, question mark mean the default value the two question mark or the question mark semicolon is a default value 
Yes, okay. Uh, question mark and the semicolon means the default value or the value when uh, it is none. So now run again. We have the email is wrong at gmail.com. Yes, so very easy to, to, to understand the default value. Uh, this default value is uh, something called the Envis operator. Yes, the Envis operator. So, uh, display the land of a string is uh, using the, the, the function count or land, email dot land, to give the land of a string. So, here the land of string is 15. Okay. You, uh, yes, so now email is none and run again. Yes, okay. But, uh, sometimes it uh, has some error. So you must uh, specify it is nullable. Yes, nullable and run again. Nullable means uh, if the email is none, then the email dot land will not be executed. Yeah, so it cannot be. Uh, rust and then you uh, specify the envis operator to give uh, the default value the default value is zero uh, if the uh, the email is none then uh, the expression result is zero okay now we talk about high order function uh, what is high order function? The this function take fun other function as parameter, and this function return a function. Okay. A function return a function, or return ha or a function which has the argument to be a function is called higher order function. So. Uh, we define as a function name do something and uh, it has two parameter or three parameter or three arguments the third argument is a function completion is a function uh, this function has one parameter and return no value return mode no value mean unit return unit mean void void or, re, uh, or return no value so we print that we, we print line do something in the container of this function so do function x y and completion x and y is variable and the completion is a function so uh, this function do something is higher order function okay higher order function uh, in uh, reality we use this function commonly because it's very important when you want to run the function with the cone back value uh, in this case we do multiple work multiple tasks inside this function and then uh, as a result, we call the completion. It means that this function can be run inside another function and it can run like asynchronously. So now calling this function do something with is 1 and y is 2 and the completion is a function. Uh, this function is execute, uh, executed when the when it is finished so here this function has uh, the parameter name result and the execution part is a block and we need to add the run uh, before the block so the block here uh, print the result is dollar result let's print the dollar result and the result is a parameter for the callbacks function. 
or the completion function of the high order function name do something okay uh, so comment this and you you you, you can test this by changing the parameter and uh, run the execution again okay so we can have a more simple way to run this code line a more simple way by calling do something uh, at is in y and open and close bracket open and close bracket here is uh, the completion yes uh, the completion parameters it is more simple so this function has uh, the completion here it has result and run okay yeah. you copy this code line and paste to here yes paste to here paste to line 40 and run again so the result here is 4 the result here is 4 yes very simple uh, yes so as any other more simple way to run this yes we have a more simple way and this is the simplest way yes so comment out this line uh, copy this part of code yes copy and paste to here so now do something the so x maybe 2 y is equal to 3 and the completion here you you can use the it it means the default parameter of a function of a code back function or yes so it you can use it it is internal object calling inside this function when you print it it means the result yes so the result here is fine yes it is it okay it have your code more readable and more and shorter and readable yes uh, so I think this is the simplest way to work with uh, a response function okay so the, the, the second type of uh, higher order function is the function which return a function for, for example we define a, a function name operator the operator has x flat and uh, we can add more parameter here but the return type of this function is a uh, function so it return to a function with parameter flat and the type of returning is flat and you return a function with y yes okay so the return function is like here and inside this block we we uh, assign the result of this function so this kind of function is uh, not more convenient than the previous the previous is more convenient and uh, so here the y uh, is a parameter of the returning functions yeah so uh, let's try to 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 uh, test this function so print line operation is good to now dollar and uh, add the expression to yeah the operation is is equal to 10 and uh, is equal to 10 open and close then it is here a function you can uh, face with as a function by adding the parameter y to here yes the function return a function and i can use it as another function yes. so run again okay so the operation here is 400 400 okay yes a function 
and return a function. You can call this as function by using the open and close bracket. Now we talk about the lambda function. A lambda function is a, a variable assigned to a function or a pointer to a function and I assign this to a variable. So it is always val, not var. Yes. Var is okay, but it may raise some error because when you assign a variable to a function, then you can reassign this to another function. So sometimes you can see that this your function run incorrectly like your desire. So let uh, give a function pointer like van not variable so this function name get full name in this case return to uh, it assigned to a function this function has two argument first name last name and uh, the return type of function is a string the string is a continue concatenation between first name and last name to create a new string yes name full name so the function here is to get full name return first name and last name yes in line 41 you print out to the console this is a lambda function okay so run again main dot kt you can run this okay uh, so print line a function full name is equal to uh, by calling dollar yes dollar uh, the expression here is get full name to call this function get full name and Nguyen the Hoang okay is my first name and, and last name to get the full name yes okay my full name is here yes so this is a very simple of a, um, a lambda function yes a lambda function is a variable with uh, assigned to a function yes so uh, I, I can give you a more useful example about this um, so now open this and define another example yes. uh, another simple example to give you more understanding about this for example we have a, a url url is a link this, this link is a string and contain two parameters it contains two parameters maybe page and limit page 0 limit 10 element uh, page to limit 10 element etc so uh, this is something like pacing in web development we have a two parameter pace and limit so uh, the link may be HTTPS HTTP secure your server name semicolon uh, your port for example 8080 is a port and uh, slash and then uh, slash to uh, the entity name for example or the controller name products uh, question marks to parameter or the query parameters like uh, page and limit for example page 1 limit 10 page uh, 2 limit 10 okay etc then this is something like a string is built from the parameter or from the arguments yes so now let's try to use it so uir is a variable and this variable is containing from two parameters yes so now try to test 
So print line the URL. Uh, so defining a URL. Uh, unify relate locate the page equal to one. Yes. No. 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 It it does not allow the label arguments here. So let's use zero. 100 0 is paid and 100 is limit okay so now we can see the output string like this the output string now is page 0 and the limit is 100 okay yes so this is a kind of uh, uh, variable with uh, content with depending on one or more variable or more than one variable and yes, you can define it as a, a template for adding some uh, parameter to your or uh, global par parameter to your application yes very useful when you want to use this so now we also have another simple example like below now i define okay so now uh, let's define another simple um, about using this uh, lambda function uh, so this is square number yes we, we convert uh, convert from one number to another number for example the square number for example square number up uh, two is four square number up three is nine square number square up uh, five is 25 okay so here we have a function like this is and the uh, output parameters the output parameter with the uh, 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 with uh, this row using this row so let's print the square number and the parameter here is 20 yes 20 so we have 400 the result is 400 yes okay so uh, yes with uh, 30 and the result is 900 yes uh, so this is called a calculation uh, function a calculation function to calculate from the input to another uh, file uh, to, to another value okay yes uh, so URL let what does it mean let if the result of the function URL is not not null not null it means the let block will run or the 54 line will be executed or the let here means that every line every code line inside the let is executed when uh, the value before let is not null okay so it means that the uir not null and uh, your program will run to this code line okay so you can print out the uh, print out the it the it mean the item yes the item parameter of this function yes. so let let is very useful when you execute uh, the block if uh, it is not null okay so you can uh, print you can do something uh, more something inside uh, this code line like to do more with it yes so it means that the url is not null and you can do more about this you can print uh, the it you can use it for calculation etc okay yes so the ID is uh, the return value of the URL 0, uh, 1, and 200. Yes. 
So uh, let's try to another example. Now we talk about the class. Class is a, uh, the, the definition of an entity. We have an entity and we, we must define the property or the method of an uh, uh, entity. Uh, entity. So we use class. So we have class. So now define a class in model package. Yes, in model we define a class. Maybe the class name is a noun, and the class name always begin with the uppercase. With uppercase. So we have class, normal class or data class. Data class is for storing the data, and it provides some built-in two string function. Yes. So now try to use the class to define a class with some um, parameter inside the constructor. So here it is constructor. The constructor contain ID, name, email, and these are three parameter of this class. Three uh, parameter of this constructor, and three parameter here is. Uh, three properties is class. So now we define an object from this class. We define an object, maybe user one, user two, user three. So let's define it inside the line of CT. So define a uh, van user one is equal to user. Here is a constructor. With ID, parameter ID, with the uh, name and the email address. Yes. So so sorry, it is email, not 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 is not email, but this is a username. And the third parameter is the email, the email address. So we have three arguments: ID, name, and email. Yes, so now I print the user one print line, print line with mean uh, print and uh, add and enter to the 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 end character of this line. Yes, so here it define user and the uh, at after the at here is the memory address. Okay, maybe the memory address of this object. Or you can show the hash code. Yes. So the hash code is a very big number and every object has one hash code. Yes. So let's define two objects and compare the hash code. Okay. The hash code and here is not the same. Yes, not the same. So now uh you you uh Create another object named user two. The user one and user two has the same content. Yes, two object has the same content, uh, but it is in separate memory address. It is uh, located in uh, uh, in uh, separated locations. So now, user one. Has code here and user two has code here, different. That's yes, different. So different memory address. Yes. But, but it's very interesting here. When you change this class to data class, when you change this, uh, change change the user to data class. What does it mean? Data class has the same. Has code, yes. Data class of two. Uh, yes. Okay. We have the same has code with the same content. So same content means same has code, and is this only correct with data class? Yes. So I comment this interesting thing. 
as two two data class with the same content has the same hash code as so uh, to compare content of two class to object you can only compare the hash code uh, we, we also have another way to compare by re-override to override the function the operator the equal operator yes so now check for user one uh, is equal to user two you yeah, call this function this function name equal yes equal mean compare content so now print line user one and user two has the same content yes so run again so try to run yes so user one and user two has the same content yes very useful very interesting so you can also override the the equal function yes uh, you can also determine which property uh, is true a uh, weak property uh, give the equal function to be true yes to be to, to be true so uh, this is convenient when you want to compare content of two objects and uh, this object has many properties many many properties but we can only focus on one two or three properties if three or two property has the same value then two objects has the same content okay yes let's uh, try some practical example we, uh, it has many properties and we only point out some uh, very little property to determine that uh, whenever these two objects are the same so now I override function equal other mean the, uh, compare this to another user so you must ensure that the other here is user yes and the ID is equal to the other ID or this dot ID is equal to other ID and uh, name is equal to other name okay yeah. other use user is uh, for checking the type of object check object type okay uh, with many property you can separate it by line like this okay and this id is other id this dot email is the uh, other dot email okay yes so this is very useful when you want to compare two objects by overriding this equal function okay run run this again so user one and user two has the same content yes uh, okay now so we continue this lesson with uh, for example you can uh, also uh, rewrite the hash code yeah you can rewrite the hash code by overriding overriding the hash code function again yes you can on uh, override this so the hash code the default hash code maybe uh, has the some some very big number and some negative number but you can uh, define your own hash code by hash code every uh, property inside this for example return id dot hash code uh, plus with uh, name dot hash hash code okay yes 
So it's quite uh, easy to see that uh, in this case, the hash code function gives you uh, the size of your properties. For example, the property has many, uh, the, the property increase, the, uh, when the property increase, and the hash code will be increased, hash code value will be increased. Okay, so here, uh, so in this way, the two hash code value also be the same. Yes, because it has the same content. So now, uh, you see that user 1 and user 2 is one. One mean, means that you cannot reassign the object, but you can change the property value of a one object. Yes. Yes, you can change the value by typing user one dot name change to zone and now the object uh, property is changed. You can also change um, email, change name, but you cannot reference or reassign this object to another object. Yes, you cannot reassign this object again. Yes, but you can change the property value of this. For example, user1 is equal to user, you create a new object, new another object, and reassign uh, the user1 to the new object, and it is not permittable. It is not permittable. Yes. You assign to Tony at gmail.com, so let's change to name, let's say for Huang, Huang, let's change to this. And here I change this to Tony, and here is Tony at gmail.com. So here is not allowed because it's one cannot be reassigned, reassigned to another object. Okay, so we here is cannot be reassigned. You cannot reassign an object to another object if it is. Van. But if it is va, everything is okay. Okay. Now change this to user three. We define user three, uh, and the name is Mary. The ID is three, and uh, the email address in this case is Mary at gmail dot com. So it's Mary at uh, gmail dot com. Okay, so you can clone this object or make uh, clone mean uh, mean create a new object and assign the same content with the previous object. It is called clone. So we clone the user bar user three to the user four means that we create a new username user four and we copy every property of the user bar, user 3 to the user 4 okay so it is clone then i print out the user 3 and print out the user 4 to see the output so run to see uh, the content of user 3 and user 4 now user 3 and user 4 has the same content so let's try it. Let's try it to run. Uh, you can also uh, clone and change the value of a specific object. Yes. Now run again. So I can see that user uh, 3 and user 4 has the same content because it is cloned and the data class can be cloned or uh, cloneable yes so now we can clone and change some value it means that we clone an object and after cloning we change some of the property value 
Yes. So uh, it is called clone and change properties. So now we uh, have user four is equal to user three dot copy in calling the cloning function and we change the value of the email to the new email address maybe mary123 at gmail.com we change the name we can also change the the id okay so we we can see that user 4 is cloned from user 3 with the, the email has been changed the email is now changed. So we define a, another type of class name, enum class or enumeration class. The enum class define a type, a value type with uh, some specific variable. For example, we have quality. Quality means best, good, excellent. Uh, for example, we have uh, resolution. Resolution means HD, full HD, 4 key. Okay. So we define a package name enums and uh, add a class mean quality. Yes. The quality class is uh, uh, enum class. So it has sum up the variable. Uh, the value like bad, normal, good, excellent. Yes. So this is, uh, enum is a, a type which has some specific value. So now we define a quality object and assign the value to excellent. And now the query, um, quality message here is uh, I use a when. When means sweet case. When and sweet case are the same. It is the same. But in Kotlin, we do not have sweet case. We only have when. Yes. Uh, when return a value uh, with a specific variable. So, uh, when the quality is bad, the return type is it is bad. When the quality is excellent, and then the return variable is uh, it is good, etc. You can define many uh, output value or many output string like here. So quality is normal. If uh, the quality is good, then the return value is yes it is wood for example yes so you can add more and more uh, variable to here more and more value to here so quality excellent let's go uh, wood excellent yes so you can also define other yes other or default so let's try in some other example so now print line the quality message and run again. Yes. So in this case, the quality message is woo example. Yes. Okay, quality example. And so normal. And run again. Yes. So quality is normal. Okay. So you can change to wood and run. It is wood. Yes, it is wood. Okay, so uh, there are many way to 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 do with when or sweet case, and it's very good when you want to change one uh, value to string. You can map one type of uh, one, one one type of integer to another type, etc. Yes. So now we define a new enum class mean request error uh, request error contain uh, many value for uh, so for divide, defining the error when you send a request to a server 
uh, so the parameter for the the enum class uh, can be a string yes this is very useful because you can define the string according to the value from the bad request we uh, have a message to describe the error internal server error we have a message for internal error success mean success yes so the value may be sought but the message you can add more detail content okay so server process successfully for example now we define a variable with the type of request error the type of request error so uh, a variable named request error uh, has a type of request error is equal to yes so request error is equal to uh, request error dot uh, uh, bad request for example uh, internal error yes and uh, I print line to the screen that request error uh, okay yes I print as a request or object and I see this internal error uh, and this is in this case I want to uh, get the detail the detail uh, request so I add dot message dot message to get the message detail so here is internal server error so request error dot message give you the message you added to the enum classes so you can also define a function inside a request error or uh, it is called a method here you can define more methods here for example we have a method to get the number of words the word count name word count uh, is a string uh, the number of words inside the string so firstly we need to trim and we split the string into uh, the array so convert this uh, string to array by calling split the split with the regular expression slash slash s or um, finding space and uh, convert this to array using space in the space so slash slash s mean space uh, size means the number of uh, array number of uh, words inside the array okay so run this again so to call the method uh, simply add the method name uh, after dot so here the request arrow may be changed to request arrow dot uh, internal server arrow or success okay a success may be good and run so the word count is four because server processes request successfully we have four word for word Okay, yes or what can return for we split the string in, into uh, an array in we calculate the size of the array so now we define a key value object yes a key value object is quite convenient when you lock a value from server lock an object from server so we need to define a key value object uh, for example, we have the detail of a product name, uh, product name, year, price, etc. So we define a person one object is here. Uh, I use a keyword object, uh, open and close bracket, name, email, name is my name, email is your email, and age is integer. So we override the function to string by using uh, lambda function. So the lambda function to string is equal to name is name 
email uh, is dollar email and h is equal to dollar h yes so this is a function to string mean that when you want to print out the detail object you can also simply uh, print the object it will automatically return to the to string method okay so now running this uh, person one yeah, print line the object a person one to the console so print line person one and run you can run by pressing the run here or right click and run the main again okay so name is why email is none why is this not because it misunderstanding it has a, a misunderstandable about the email you have the email it line um, 30 and i want to access this email so change this email to email address change this to email address and copy this email address and paste to here to line 102 so run again yes so now we have name email age so the person one we call person one means that we call person one dot to string so now i define another uh, object or another variable name person two now person two is a mutable object a mutable map yes you can use the mutable map with key value type key here is string and the value here is type any any is the object type yes uh, integer is any person is any array is any string is also any so we assign the name to zone the email to zone at gmail.com and the s is equal to 18 etc you can add multiple value to here using the syntax of uh, key to value yes we assign the key to the value according to uh, we, ha we have many property inside a mutable map object yes now if you want to print out the person to simplify print line person to uh, not necessary to define two string in this because it is an object not a class so here we can see the mat name zone and age so person two also have the internal to string auto generated to string like here yes uh, so now let's define another number another um, so now person 2 is one and you want to change the value inside person 2 now change this to zone 1 2 3 and is this okay yes it is okay because uh, the person two is a mutable map, but but you cannot assign reassign the person two to another object. Yes, and if you change this to map up, then it is not mutable or unmutable. So you cannot change the property of an unmutable object or map object. So let's conclude here. You can change if the person is a uh, mutable map. Yes, you can only change if person two is a mutable map. So change back to mutable map of string any. Okay, so comment now this, and uh, then we yes, then we can un uncomment this line and print uh, print line the person to and then we change the person to the property of uh, 
h to another value maybe change to uh, 18 okay change to 18 is good so run again yes so we see the person to get new properties update new updated properties shown zone one two three and h now is 18 okay so this is very useful when you work with mutable map you can add or remove property inside the existing object and it is quite flexible when you you uh, assign an object um, and the object has multiple and variable uh, and it is depending on a source and it is uh, need the flexibility of change okay so this is person two this uh, so now we talk about companion object companion object is good to like static in Kotlin we do not have the static but uh, the companion object like static in Java in C sharp okay so this is called companion object companion object means that we can define a, a function or a property inside an existing class and you can access this property using class name you do not need to create a new object from this class then calling this function is not necessary it's only need to use uh, class name dot function name class name dot property name so let's add uh, the function the function inside the companion object uh, block so the calculation class has the function of multiply multiply has x and y and the result here is uh, x multiplied by y okay so by calling this we only uh, use class name now is calculation dot multiply this is enough so print line calculation dot multiply is two y is five and here the result is ten now in this case the result uh, display to the console yes wait a few seconds so now it is 10 okay so person 2 we have a calculation multiply okay so what about the property is something like static method and what about static property yes uh, maybe we have a static property name val p and you can access this by calling calculation dot p yes so p is equal to dollar uh, calculation dot p yes calculation dot p so run again then uh, now p is uh, 3.1416 okay so this uh, in java i call static property or static function or static method but here we call companion object we surround every function and property inside the companion object mean it is static yes and quite easy to remember but in Kotlin I think that we do not need the static because we can define a function and property independently with uh, the class so it can be defined outside the class we uh, remove class and we define the function outside or inside outside of the class but inside the, the Kotlin file and other package or other class can use it so now we define a scheme class 
main BS form. Sim class will have set sim sim will have set as abstract can be understand as unfinished. Okay, maybe for unfinished is here. Abstract mean unfinished. Abstract mean cannot create project, uh, create object from the seal class or the abstract class. So here we define a vehicle class which constructor has three arguments or uh, no two arguments name and year so we override the two string as a lambda function name uh, display name is equal to dollar name year is equal to dollar year yes so we override those two string and the scene class uh, is abstract then now we define a zero call variable yes zero call and is equal to zero call yes so you assign some value for the uh, property like haha -ha, or maybe the year is 2022 okay so it cannot be uh, create a new object because why because it is abstract yes or it is abstract yes seal seal mean abstract seal time cannot be instant yet it is abstract or it is unfinished yes it is unfinished abstract it cannot be uh, create object from or uh, it is uh, cannot be an instant yet yes so if you work with java or c sharp work with the uh, abstract so the abstract class is like scene class in kotlin but scene class in in uh, c sharp not the same as scene class in kotlin yes scene class in uh Kotlin can be inherited. It can be inherited by a subclass or a child class. For example, we have bicycle class. Bicycle class also have name and year, but it uh, has a more property name has basket. Has basket may be true, may be false. Yes. So boolean. It inherit from vehicle. Uh, and uh, cone so it's, uh, the constructor with name and value and year yes name and year is a constructor of vehicle yes so i override the two string like here override the two string and override the the two string of parent class or the two string of vehicle by calling super dot two string Super dot pull to string is uh, the two string of vehicle, and we display more has basket. Yes, has basket is has basket is a property of bicycle class. Yes, only bicycle class has a property of has basket. Yes, so super mean. Uh, parent class this mean the current class okay so now define the bicycle object uh, valuable bicycle object the type is bicycle and uh, we instantiate this bicycle object value name is via high year is 2022 and has it is true Yes, and I print line the bicycle here. So run again. Yes, and I can see that name here, year, and has basket, etc. Yes, we have multiple 
properties display to the console okay so uh, you can add more child class to the uh, vehicle yes maybe we have car uh, his car is also the child class of the vehicle yes we can uh, give you many a sample about the inheritance so let define car so class car inherit from vehicle and override and inherit the uh, the constructor the constructor of the vehicle so car also have name so have year it's not year it is uh, integer year is on uh, is only an integer so year is integer and we have more two more properties to the car we have engine size engine size of flat and horsepower is also a flat yes engine size and horsepower mm. so no, horse horsepower is only integer yes integer is good is better and it uh, inher inherit <coughs> from the class vehicle and uh, inherit the the uh, parent uh, constructor of vehicle okay inherit the constructor of vehicle yes quite easy to remember this because uh, when you work with the uh, java c sharp you also have the um, type of uh, inheritance like here so we also override the, the, the two string function by calling the super two string and add more engine size and house power to this line so two per, uh, super two string and then engine size is equal to dollar engine size and horsepower is equal to dollar horsepower yes horsepower is the dollar horsepower okay so this is two string for the car and now I define I create a new car object named car1 the type is car and call the constructor so car import the car you unenter to import the car or uh, after importing you can see the import model car is inside the package model you can import all by import model dot star like here yes Im import every class inside a package is something is like in java or c sharp in c sharp it is called namespace the same so uh, the car one has name year has engine size horsepower so let copy multiple car object uh, so print line car one yes if you want to print line the detail object let's run okay so we display name year engine size horsepower Yes, would. Uh, you can also print the car one dot name, the car one dot horsepower. Uh, you can uh, also print the detail property of a specific object by using dot car one dot name, car one dot horsepower, car one dot engine size. Yes. So here the engine size is uh, one hundred and sixty three is my horsepower is a horsepower value of the car one yes okay so uh, you can do the same with other object uh, you can also use width yes uh, width allow you to access multiple properties of an object without calling the object many times yes so for example you can print out 
c a r o n e n a m e f r e e n o w c a r o n e h o s p o w e r f r e e n o w c a r o n e o t b l a h b l a h o k a y o t h e r w i s e y o u c a n u s e w i t h s o y o u c a n p r i n t e v e r y p r o p e r t y o f t h i s i n s i d e t h i s b l o c k y e s p r i n t l i n e h o s p o w e r p r i n t l i n e h o s Uh, engine sign, print l i n e name, print l i n e year, yes. Or uh, using width, using width, you can uh, not repeatedly uh, calling the object name. So you can also update multiple property here. You can update multiple property inside an object here, yes. This is also very convenient in, in this by using a syntax uh, name bicycle dot apply. Yes, apply mean mean uh, um, update many uh, multiple properties. Or bicycle dot apply mean you update the bicycle and update what? I update gear. I update engine size. I update horsepower. Yes, I can update multiple variable inside the apply block. Then I call print line. So print line bicycle. I can see the bicycle, the updated bicycle object. So I I misunderstand in the close bracket. Yes, and print. Okay, now I can see. Name we have ha year and has basket. Yes. So conclude. Uh, apply mean update multiple variable each sign object. Update multiple. Yes. It is called apply. Okay. So uh, now you want to check the object types. Check object type. I can use the 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 infix function name is yeah. is. You can check using the is. It is infix function name. Yes. So now, uh, for example, in this function, I define a function with name describe. Yes. Uh, vehicle. Yes, I define a function name describe vehicle. Uh, the input argument is vehicle, and the return type of uh, this function is string. It return a string. Uh, this string depending on the vehicle type. So to check, I use is. For example, vehicle is bicycle. The string is. It is a bicycle. If the vehicle is car, then the returning string is it is a car. Yes, and uh, I need to, to import and uh, else else or another case. Otherwise, it uh, display I don't know. For example, so it is quite simple. We have multiple choice and. Uh, uh, If the default or the other way, I can display. I don't know. Okay. So call it describe your call uh, by by entering the pro the argument as vehicle. Yes, add the vehicle as uh, as argument, and then run. So, uh, yes, I I can see the result because uh, it is a string. So let the uh, print line. Uh, let calling print line, so print line describe a vehicle is equal to a vehicle. Yes, so it displays it is a vehicle. So you can replace the vehicle by a car object by adding car one, press run. Then I can see it is a car. Okay, and now you add uh, the other y object, but this object must. Must inherit from vehicle, yes. Uh, and now I I add the user so the error occur, occur because 
the argument parameter here is only accept uh, VR core object. So you must define a child class of VR core and uh, add it to here. Yes. Uh, it is also not compatible with uh, key value object like this. It is also not uh, match. So uh, re remove this line, this code line, and uh, run back to car one. Yes, and run again. And then we continue with a uh, um, simple example about uh, an array or a list. But before that, we need to define an extension. Extension means that you you add more uh, method to an existing class. So it is called extension. The extension uh, here is something like the the, the container extension in uh, sweep uh, apple sweep yes so extension mean add more method to an existing class so now in uh, car class i want to add more uh, method inside class mean run yes the run method has uh, the argument of speed speed is double so I only print like that uh, this car is running at speed blah blah so adding the uh, uh, a string like here so name is running at speed uh, dollar speed yes as is so print line so if you want to add more method uh, to an existing class you can define it separately into a separated file. This is very convenient if you want to add more method to a class uh, that is in your library or dependencies. Yes. Okay, so it display GRB 200 blah blah is running at speed. Okay. So uh, if your project has some deprecated method from library, you can fix that by defining a method which has the same name with the deprecated uh, method. But inside the deprecated method, inside the extension method, you call the new method. Okay. So now you define some number is a mutable list of integer. Mutable list means that you can insert, update, and change value inside. A mutable list. So some number is a mutable list of integer. Uh, the integers here are uh, maybe negative, maybe positive. So we have some up uh, checking. For example, you can iterate uh, some number for each and print line every item inside the list, calling it it mean items item inside the list okay so print line item or it and run again you can see that every item in a separated line if you want to add in one line and add a space between this you can print line it and add a space at the end so the separated uh, characters maybe semicolon maybe uh, dash maybe uh, space yes you can add it to the print dollar it uh, Kotlin provide you some very useful checking so now I uh, call the any any means that uh, if you have at least one item uh, which uh, has the condition, then it is true. Okay, so you can check that if uh, any of the item is negative, so the program will run to 
the line 143 so you print at least one item is negative yes you check for somewhere dot any for checking any of the the item match the condition yes match the condition so here you can also check for every uh, item inside the list by calling own so for example some number dot own it means that you check for uh, every item is a list which has less than 100 so I print line to the console that all item or every item are less than 100 so all means every item match the condition yes any mean at least one item match the condition yes so uh, if you forget all or any you can iterate you can write a function you, you iterate every item is a list and the function return true or fail depending on your condition but if you use any and all here it is very convenient for you because the function this is a building function is uh, will run very fast and is very short yes so now we uh, come to another example another uh, small example about uh, how to check uh, some number is equal to none yes none mean uh, every number match not match yes every number not match not match it is uh, it is uh, the backward of uh, any yes none mean maybe not any okay none is not any it means that no item has the value of 100 or none none mean we check for the condition and no item match the condition so we define another list another list of flat uh, this array contain many flat number you can change it to double yes so we have a 3.5 flat 3.2 flat etc and define a list of flat inside this array okay so uh, you can also iterate so this flat you can also check for any check all check none etc so you change the, the, the first element to 22 and is occur error because because the list are or cannot be changed multiple list, list up you can change okay so changes to multiple list up you can see the output like here okay so uh, you must print the result by printing some flat print line some flat this copy this code and paste to the line 153 okay so it display uh, the first number has been changed okay the first number is changed oh uh, good so it's called mutable list mutable list means the list can be changed can be insert can be modified can be delete okay so now we have a variable named cars. Uh, the car here is a mutable list of car. So we define a list of object uh, of type car, and uh, we add more. We add some existing car into the the list. So the first car has name, year, as uh, engine size has a horsepower so now I copy this object and uh, paste and change okay so I, I have just do it for you by uh, defining some of the object with uh, the information as below 
with the engine size, the different engine size, uh, different horsepower, and in uh, unsorted list because uh, we want to use uh, to to apply some of the useful function about uh, uh, useful function uh, with list. Okay, yeah. Then run again and you can see uh, the list like here. Okay, uh, but it is a long line. Uh, you can separate this by using for it to iterate. Uh, so cast dot for it, and you print line every item inside the list by print line it and print every item inside the list. So here you can see that uh, line by line. Uh, every item is displayed in a separated line and uh, you can also use the uh, for each and otherwise you can, you can uh, force uh, va in uh, car in cars okay so now if you want to add more uh, item inside the list you can using your function to Add at a specific uh, location inside the list. So the common way is to add uh, this item to the first item or to the last item. Yes. So let use car dot add zero mean the first uh, the first number zero means the first number. So the first element we add a car named Nissan. Okay. The kind of Nissan is that added to uh, the first element of the list. Okay. So here, we okay, have Nissan, uh, Maruno, and the year, engine size, and horsepower. Yes. So now I iterate the car. Yeah, and see the the car result. The key, see the car result. Yes. So here, I can see the Nissan Maruno has been at the first number at the zero position the position zero contains this so i can also print line uh, the result after adding to the last item so adding to the last item you simply call add very simple so car add mean that add to the last item it's a default, uh, default option, yes. So Ben, I add a car name Bentley, eight liter, yes. Okay, I add this to the uh, last item of the list. I add to the last item of the list, yes. And then I iterate the car list by using for each and print line the item so okay i can see the Bentley 8 is added as a uh, last element so how to filter me filter means that you you find some uh, specific uh, car or some specific object with a specific condition for example you want to filter a car which year is between 2000 and, uh, 2013 and 2016 yes the car is between uh, this number uh, the year is between uh, this year and that year so uh, I, I, I fetch it to an array of result named filter car so car dot filter uh, it year in yes the condition here in uh, in this block uh, so year from uh, 2013 to 2016 okay yes so the result is filtered okay. so copy uh, this line paste to here and replace the car with filtered car then you can see the filtered uh, car yes the filtered car in line and uh, then uh, for now I, I use another uh, type of for loop so for 
uh, car for for item in iterate in uh, filter car and uh, I print line the uh, item yes I print line the item here okay it's quite simple to 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 understand okay yes so you you can see the filter car okay the filter car he, here is a separated list a separated array which is the original array and uh, this only has two items Lexus and Bentley okay yeah with a year year is between uh, 2013 and 2016 no so it is quite a uh, easy to remember the, the, the filter yes and the filter is very useful you want to to check and you want to uh, get some uh, element inside a list yeah, you query uh, in inside the list and you query some uh, item inside the list with uh, a specific uh, condition yes very conditions so now you want to find car name contain Lexus uh, to find a, a list of object, we need to uh, define a condition. So the condition is maybe a name contain Lexus with ignore case, because we search for a string, so we always uh, ignore case, and uh, we uh, we create a filter car. It is equal to car dot filter and uh, the condition is it mean item uh, dot name dot contain lexus and uh, ignore k is true ignore k is true means that uh, if the name contain uh, lexus with uh, uppercase or low k it is not important and uh, so the filter root car here is uh in the list and i i can show the result by iterating for item in filter item car and print line the item inside the list so, okay we have two yes we have two item in the filter car yes uh let's just see the uh 200h f spot and hybrid Okay, so we print line now to sort a list. Yes, and uh, how to sort a list by uh, sort the list. Okay, uh, by horse power or maybe by uh, engine size from uh, uh, small to bigger or uh, ascending or vice versa descending. So the first we want to sort the list by horse power ascending. Uh, so the sorted car is a new list, is a separated list. So uh, I call this by uh, using sort by car dot sort by and uh, inside the block is it horse power is a the property uh, you want to sort and uh, then uh, i can for it the sorted car and print out the result to see okay so print line it in this case will show you every item inside the sorted car by ascending so here i can see that the sorted car show you the horsepower from smaller to bigger Yes, smaller to bigger. Yes, so uh, horsepower, horsepower here. Okay, good. So it's very easy to sort a list. Uh, you can forget about buffer sort, quick sort, no problem. So you do use this function, and this function will do it for you. Otherwise, you can sort it by descending. Sort of by the city sending means that the horsepower with uh, bigger first and smaller then smaller. Okay, so here you can see that biggest is the 
to first and the bigger 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 okay and uh, the smallest is at the end so it is called sort by ascending uh, no no sort by descending yes so now you want to get car names and uh, add to a uh, separate now i want to set uh, to get an array of car names and add this add them to a separated list the separated list now contain only strings so uh, the strings is uh, host uh, name okay so car name is an array of string or uh, list of string và car name is equal to uh, a, a map list so uh, map means that you create a new array with the same size with the old array and the content is changed okay so i use the map function so map function here only get the name uh, the name property okay so i print out the car name in this case and you can see uh, the list of string as car name okay so the name here is a list uh, you can also iterate it using uh, for each and uh, for in. Okay. Uh, yes, I can see lectures, zeta, etc. So this is an array of string in Kotlin. Yeah, okay. Name, car name. Okay. So the next I can for each. Okay, to iterate. Uh, every item in the uh, list of string and I print line it and run again yes now I can see line by line uh, the car name display line by line yeah. okay okay uh, you can also map other field uh, for example horsepower uh, price engine size etc so uh, you can also calculate the size of the list by calling uh, size or count okay uh, car number dot count so there are car num names dot count cars you can also print like the first name the first element or the last element by calling first method or last method to give you the first and the last element in the list okay so car name dot last car name dot first uh, if the array has one element so the first name uh, first and the last are the same okay so here is we have the the, the count of the array yes. uh, the first name here and the last name here and there are 13 cars in the list it's very easy to understand this so now you you can split uh, the array or the list to uh, two array yeah. or partition partition mean to uh, split the existing list to two array uh, one array match the condition and one array does not match the condition yes uh, I call this and as newer car or older car and put this inside a tuple the tuple has two parameter newer car and older cars a uh, new car is a car with a uh, year bigger than 2019 otherwise it is the older cars okay so we have two properties inside a tuple new car and older car uh, depending on the condition okay so this is partition or split uh, it is quite important if you want to 
partition a class, a student class, into two parts. One part to pass the examination, and the other does not pass the examination. Okay. Uh, so now we print line the newer car or the older car. So let uh, press a breakpoint here. Yes, you click to set a breakpoint, and the program will be navigated to this breakpoint and stop. So you can copy the code newer car here and paste to here to see the variable. So here we have four elements, four elements inside the newer cars and uh, to print the older car you copy this and paste to here yes and we have nine elements okay from zero to eight or nine element uh, dot count I can see nine yes and you can also uh, neural car dot count enter yes the size is four yes and uh, four plus six okay four plus nine equal to thirteen uh, you can also press using uh, debugger for test and for see the detail object and depending on the detail object, you can decide what code to write or how to fix some bugs in your application. You can also find the maximum and minimum value in a list. For example, you can see uh, the minimum value of engine size, the maximum value of price inside a list, the maximum value of horsepower inside the list of cars yeah so Kotlin give you some built-in function to do that then you can only use you can only use or call so let print line cars dot mean up yes mean up or max up inside the block I uh, press the horsepower okay it dot horsepower so the minimum horsepower in this case is 90 yes. press debug use break breakpoint and then press debug then the program will run to here run to this line and you can uh, copy and paste so the expression to here so the car we have here so car meet up you know, can copy paste to here and enter okay so the result here is 90 yes you can also uh, find the maximum value of horsepower in this case, the maximum value here is 603 uh, and uh, 35. Okay. So, uh, mean up and max up is quite uh, popular when you want to calculate the size and when you want to uh, get the, the, the minimum or the maximum size of a specific field in the list. Now we talk about delegate. Uh, delegate means you do uh, some task uh, uh, for another object. Yes, uh, delegate or deliveration. So let's do some example to understand about delegate more efficiently. So Firstly, you need to understand about the interface in Kotlin. The interface uh, can only 
uh, contain some method definition and uh, uh, to override and to to implement the interface you need to uh, implement every method inside the interface okay. so let's create a new interface in uh, here and I, I uh, give it the name of i storage uh, repository yes i mean interface i storage repository there is an interface in this interface there is a function name uh, make connection to make a connection to a database and the, the argument here is connection string connection string is also a string so uh, make connection inside uh, this the implementation is uh, forward to a class not an interface so i remove this remove this because uh, the implementation is only placed on which class uh, that implement this interface so let's define a class and uh, this class will implement this interface so i create right click and new kotlin class and file and name it mysql repository this is mysql uh, database repository for example so mysql re repository there is a constructor the constructor has a parameter of connection string uh, and the connection string here is a string and it uh, implement the interface i store it repository so you must implement the method of make connection yes okay so for simplify you uh, call green line and uh, here uh, connection to my sql database with connection string and you concatenate the connection string to this okay so in main dot uh, kotlin you can uh, create a new object of my sql repository uh, you define a variable name user uh, no i define you a repository yes a variable name repository uh, it has a type of uh, is equal to interface uh, storage repository no you cannot do this because the interface does not does not allow you to create the object yes interface does not have constructor you cannot uh, create an instance of, uh, of a class from the into uh, instance from the interface kind of you need an object from the interface so let's comment on uh, this line you must create an object uh, which implement the interface not directly from the interface again okay, now so i define the variable uh, repository mean var repository uh, is equal to mysql the, the type is mysql repository and it is equal to mysql repository with a connection string is equal to a connection string so this is a uh, an example of a uh, connection string so let uh, add your server name database name user id password etc and this is a connection string for my secret yes so uh, the my 
repository will implement uh, the method of the interface. So you can print line repository dot. Okay. So uh, you cannot see the output because you does not implement uh, the two string method. So let uh, press the debugger and then here you can show the connect string by typing repository dot connection string yes you can see the connection string right here so let open right click and kotlin class so my db yes uh, so define a, a class name my db repository Yes, my DB repository is also implement the interface. I store it repository. So it also have the connection string in the uh, constructor and it implements the interface I store it repository or by. Yes, by means that uh, the my DB repository win. Uh, the my SQL repository will implement to the my DB repository. Okay, yes. So you add the connection string to here. Copy. Okay, and open my kt main jump Kotlin. So now run the program again to define a variable uh, of mydb repository. Yes, a mydb repository. The type here is uh, mydb repository. So call the constructor like this and screen line the mydb repository dot make connection yes okay so you can call the make connection inside the mydb repository but the implementation is from my sql repository okay yes so the connection here is not so good look good you are uh, create uh, an object and uh, make the, the connection to here yes so now connect uh, my sql db with the uh, connection string like this okay so my db will use the method inside my db repository my sql repository okay by my sql repository my db repository use the implementation inside my db repository yes okay so we talk about uh, delegated properties uh, what is delegated property so delegated ma uh, property means that you make a separated class and inside this class you implement getter setter for specific property yes you uh, make a separated class with override the setter and getter so now let uh, use the 
user class, for example. Yes. So open the user class and uh, add a uh, add more property name h s is integer and use the user delegate. Then below I define the user delegate delegate class and uh, override some method. So we we must override two method. Uh, getter or setter one me method to change the value and one method to uh, get the value okay so copy this and paste to here user delegate and inside the delegate user delegate we define two uh, method we override two method so h now is a property so private variable value integer so for storing a value of a property you must define a field a private field a private field can store the value of the property yes so let's implement two method getter or setter for the h property So use a getter setter, change a little bit. So these are operator function, get value, and you must Im Im uh, import the Kotlin reflect, uh, Kotlin property here. As a get value will return to the value in line 18. And I print line to show that I am calling the get value. Get value of dollar property dot name give you the property name. So next we have operator function set value. Set value you can change uh, the private field to a new value and it is called setter. So I, I change the value is equal to i. Yes, i is the new value of h. So print line that. Uh, call set value of uh, dollar property dot name yeah, uh, property dot name okay. So now in user delegate, you uh, can add the open and close bracket. Okay, open and close. Yeah, yes, this is here. User delegate. They all look good. Okay. So in main dot kt, I test this delegate property by Defining an, an object name file user5 and uh, initialize this with constructor uh, value like here. So, tag and uh, tag at gmail.com, etc. And it is a user5. So, user5 dot h. Uh, change to 30 is a setter yes. change to 30 mean it is a setter so run again yes call set value of h call set value of h
Yes. So what about uh, get value? Get value is simply uh, called print line. Yes, print line. User file dot h. Yeah. Run again. So cone get value of h. Here, the uh, block of code you see is here, line 21. So we have some standard delegate like lazy or observable, lazy or observable. Uh, it is some uh, standard delegate. Uh, lazy win uh, is uh, when you call the method or the property, then uh, it is created. Observable mean uh, if there are any change for on the property, then we um, then a, a function is called to notify about that change yes. it's very useful you want to uh, map this with the uh, use interface it means that when your value change the interface binding with value will be relaxed okay yes it's quite a un quite a important when you want to 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 manage some property and this property are displayed in the use interface so first we talk about lazy delegate for example we define a property name this uh, description the description property is a string and by lazy it means that uh, this property only create whenever you access this okay so it is called lazy is called lazy so the description here must be val not value not variable yes, it is value not variable because it uh, run only and assign one time okay changes to val val is okay in this case so now open main dot tt then test uh, test the lazy delegate now test the lazy delegate by print line user 5 dot uh, destruction okay lazy. so it is uh, it calls the lazy delegate and run now we have ID we have name and email like this okay this would now what about the observable how, how can we implement the observable delegate there is a standard kotlin uh, the kotlin standard delegate so now i want to uh, create an object from key value map in reality in some project we need to map the value getting from the api uh, it is a type of key value object and then it fetch to the the object of uh, products for example and it match some property inside the key value now okay we have name a string by map it means that we have a, a map of dictionary type of uh, key is string and value is any value is an object and key is a string so uh, we have some property like name or price of a specific products and is uh, by map by map or uh, it use the map to to find the property name 
and assign the value from the value of the key. Okay. Yes. So run and build to see the arrow. This must be val, not val, not variable. It is value, not variable. Okay, so now in main.pt uh, test for this by define a product named product A. Uh, initialize the product from the map. Yes, this map is map up. You know, calling this map is map up from name to uh, and name to iPhone 4 and uh, age to uh, 2000 for example yes okay and price okay name and price so the product A is uh, mapped from a key value object so we convert from a key value object to uh, 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 to to an object, yes. So print lines product A, like here. Yes, from map up. Okay. So to see the detail, you must implement the two string method of the product. So let override two string of uh, products. Okay. Uh, it return to name is equal to dollar name. Uh, then price is equal to dollar price yes so we can see the by calling the two string method yeah name and price so what about observable properties observable property means that when a property value is changed or uh, some notification is raised or some function is called then you can use this function to reload data or to do something yes a function is run or notification is run to notify about the change yeah so it is observable observable So observable property to the products may be uh, a variable, description, uh, the type is string and by by op, uh, delegate dot observable. Yes, by delegate dot observable because it is uh, built in or the standard observable of Kotlin. Initial value is the 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 first value of this description variable and here it is quite important here is a block of code to show you about old and new value uh, how to change what to change from old to new yes also property name change from old value to new value okay so i print line uh, the the change from the old value to the new value yes very important so i uh, the product a description is good to so now i change mm -hmm. the value of the property of the observable property i change this to hey hey for example i change the an, an observable property and then I can see that the value change from initial value to hey hey yes you can also change to another value and after changing the observable function is called again yes so now let's change uh, again by product A the description is equal to Ha ha, yes. The second time I change this to ha ha, 
the first I change to hey hey. Yes. So it changed from hey hey to ha ha. The first change from initial value to ha ha hey hey. The second part changed from hey hey to ha ha. Okay. Yes. So the lock is saved and the observable function is run. So now another example that uh, the property type now is integer and the observable with validation is called virtuable. Yes, virtuable is very important when you want to observe and uh, and uh, validation. Observe and validate mean virtuable. Yes, virtuable. Okay, now so you you define another property. So the property here name override count, for example, or the number of uh, number of products, or I call count, va count. Number of product must be bigger than or equal zero, yeah, or must be bigger than or than zero, yeah. So it uh, implement or by the delegate dot virtualable. Yes, virtualable. And here I copy the observable function and paste to here. I I uh, I can assign the validation condition by new value bigger than zero. It is a validation. If the condition does not match then the value does not change the value cannot be changed yes so let's test you can test this very simple for test this uh, let assign the first value to 2 yes 2 is bigger than 0 so the validation is passed then I can see the value change from 0 to 2. Yes. Now I change this to 3 and then run. I can see that the value change from 2 to 3. Good because the validation is passed. But now the product a dot count is equal to minus 1. Uh, the validation is failed because the count is negative. And I print down to the screen the product a dot count. So the value at this time is the O value. Yes, okay, 3. Yeah. At this time, the value does not change. It drawn back to the previous value mean tree okay so it is very important if you want to validate some property result for assigning a value uh, so I think that it is time to uh, stop this tutorial because uh, it's quite too long and I give you many example about Kotlin and I hope you to Use Scotland for more in your project. And thank you very much for watching. About the code, you can download the code below the description. The link in GitHub, you can copy the code. You can run in your computer. And if you have any question and recommendation, please comment below this video. And uh, I will be great to help you. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye and see you again.